The lubricating oil flow begins as oil is drawn by the gyrotor pump from the oil pan through the rigid internal suction tube. The suction tube delivers oil to the gyrotor oil pump. The pump then delivers the lubricating oil through an internal drilling in the cylinder block to the bottom of the oil cooler. The oil flows to the top of the oil cooler through the inner channels of the oil cooler cover. At the top of the oil cooler, the oil flows to the oil cooler bypass valve. If the oil is cold, the bypass valve will be open, allowing some oil to bypass the cooler and flow to the filter, which reduces engine parasitic loads and improves efficiency. This also helps the oil reach operating temperature quicker. As the temperature of the oil increases and the viscosity decreases, the bypass valve closes and directs the oil flow through the cooler element. The oil cooler element cools the oil as it is moved through the plates and coolant is passed on the outside of the plates. From the cooler, the oil flows to the combination oil filter, the filter bypass valve, and the pressure regulator. On the original ISC design, the regulator valve remains closed until the main oil rifle pressure is approximately 50 psi. As pressure increases, the valve opens, uncovering the dump port and allowing some oil to drain back to the inlet side of the pump. On all ISL engines, ISC CM850 engines, and ISC CM554 engines, modified as previously discussed, the pressure regulator directs the flow of excess oil from the oil regulator to the oil pan rather than to the inlet side of the pump. This allows the pump to bypass enough oil to regulate the oil pressure to the desired range without too much restriction to the flow of oil. At normal operating temperature, minimum oil pressure at low idle is 10 psi. At rated speed, minimum pressure is 30 psi. A combination oil filter is used on these engines. The upper section of the filter contains the full flow filter element, while the lower section contains the bypass element. Oil passing through the full flow portion of the oil filter flows to the main oil rifle. Oil flowing through the bypass portion of the filter returns to the inlet side of the oil pump. During normal engine operation, oil circulates through the full flow section of the combination filter and into the main oil rifle. However, if the full flow section becomes plugged to the point that a 50 psi pressure difference exists between the filter in and filter out, the bypass valve opens in the oil filter head and routes unfiltered oil to the main oil rifle to lubricate the engine. To measure the pressure difference across the filter, a filter in pressure port and a filter out pressure port are integral parts of the filter head. The turbocharger oil supply line is connected with a straight thread O-ring supply fitting in the filter head. The supply line directs the filtered oil under pressure to the turbocharger. Once in the turbocharger, the oil flows to the bearing journals and the thrust bearing. Once the oil has passed through the bearings, it flows under gravity back into the engine oil pan sump through the turbocharger drain line. Once the oil is cooled and filtered, a cross drilling over the number three main bearing carries it across the block to the main oil rifle. The main oil rifle runs the length of the block and carries oil to the crankshaft, camshaft, and the overhead through individual drillings.
On CM850 engines and ISL CM554 engines, the J-Jet piston cooling nozzles are mounted to and supplied oil by the piston cooling nozzle rifle. From the main bearings, oil enters the crankshaft and lubricates the connecting rod bearings through internal cross drillings. On both CAPS and HPCR equipped engines, drillings in the block and gear housing connect to the external groove on the number one cam bushing to provide oil to the fuel injection pump rollers and tappets. A return hole in the fuel injection pump camshaft housing allows oil to return to the oil pan. From the top drilling in the cam bushing bore, oil is carried to the cylinder block deck by individual vertical drillings, one per cylinder. For cylinder number one, this drilling aligns with a vertical drilling in the cylinder head. For cylinders two through six, the oil then flows to a transfer slot in the head gasket. From each of the transfer slots in the head gasket, oil flows to a vertical drilling in the cylinder head to the base of the rocker lever pedestal. The oil travels through a groove in the bottom of the pedestal plate. Then it flows around the rocker lever mounting cap screws to the rocker shaft. Oil flows through angle drillings to each end of the shaft. At each end of the shaft, the drilling intersecting the angle drilling allows oil to flow from the inside diameter of the shaft to the groove in the shaft, which lubricates the rocker lever bore. The lubrication groove in each end of the shaft also directs oil to two drillings. These drillings provide a path for oil flow. One drilling directs oil flow to the foot pad that contacts the crosshead. Oil from this drilling then travels down the crosshead and lubricates the valve stems. The second drilling in the rocker lever directs oil to the adjusting screw. Oil flow around the adjusting screw lubricates the push tube sockets. The front gear train assembly receives lubrication from oil splash and the drain from the fuel injection pump camshaft housing. The oil pump idler gear is pressure lubricated. After lubricating the front gear train, the oil drains back to the pan for recirculation. Oil flow to the air compressor begins at a fitting installed in the main oil rifle. The line connected to this fitting supplies oil to the air compressor crankcase, where it lubricates the crankshaft and connecting rod. From the crankcase, the oil drains through the front gear housing and returns to the oil pan.